Well, welcome back to my channel. I am um, back at Harrison Bay, but I am here on a particular purpose, and that purpose is macro photography. I have not taken my Laowa uh, 100 millimeter two times macro lens out for a long, long time. And while I was scouting the area the other day, I ran across all of these wonderful trees, downed trees with um, fungi growing all over them and I knew immediately I had to come back out and uh, take a look. So I'm kind of experimenting around a little bit trying to make sure that I'm getting the light right. Um, and uh, I'll show you a, a quick setup I have here on uh, one of the images I'm working on. So you can see my camera here is set up. I'm actually coming under this little limb here to these uh, elements on the other side where the sun is at. I'm not sure. I can't really get a good image on the back of my camera, but um, all the way down this particular log, I have all of these wonderful examples. Uh, I'm going to spend a little time here. I am on the back side of the log at the moment, so I need to get over here on the other side where the sun is coming through occasionally through the clouds. My initial setup with this is to shoot at f8. I want to get as much of the image in focus as possible. I may even boost that up to f11 because shutter speed is not important to me. I'm doing it all on a tripod. The one thing about the Laowa lens is that um, the closer you get to your subject in that two times macro, the more light it eats. And you have to go down to, to the full 2.8 if you want to try to get even a little bit of it in focus. But my problem is I can't hand hold a camera still enough for that to work for me. So I need the tripod. Uh, but we're going to take a few pictures. We'll see what it looks like, and we may move on to another spot here in a minute. Well, I've been playing around out here, taking some pictures of fungi, a little moss, some tree rings, other kinds of things. And one thing that I've come across is that it doesn't matter uh, where you stand. If you're not flat, if you're not shooting flat at an object, <clears throat> even at F11, the the field of focus is so razor thin that I've had to take maybe five, maybe six different um, focus shots to do some focus stacking back when I get back into to, uh, Photoshop, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. It's just uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll try to walk you through one of those just to kind of see how that's done. If you've never done that before, it's really easy. Photoshop is is amazing. Um, so I am going to head back to the car now. I've got some work to do today um, and so I can't stay out here all day but it's beautiful out here and I highly recommend you take some time to come around. Okay we're back in the studio and I have a couple of images brought up here You'll notice I've done multiple images of each and there's a reason for that so couple of reasons for that. If we look at this as a full image, you will see that right down here along the bottom with this little uh, bit of bark and looks like some spider legs growing out of it, that part of the image is in focus. And then if I move here, you'll see that the middle of the image is in focus. And if I move here, the back of the image is in focus. Now, the reason that I pulled this in is because three images is not enough. Keep in mind that I was shooting at F11. Uh, so it's, you know, a, a, a pretty interesting depth of field. It's not like it's F.2. Um, but also notice, too, that as I move from image to image, the image size changes. And the reason for that is, and, and I'm shooting blind here with my camera, so the reason for that is with the Laowa 100 millimeter, 
the zoom is done by moving the lens inside the inside the tube now luckily it comes with a little uh, uh, ring to put on top to keep the dust out but as you as you move focus you're either moving closer and closer and closer to the object or you're moving farther and farther and farther from the object and the size of the object in the frame changes and that's why Photoshop is so important so I'm going to just quickly for this image I'm going to quickly do just a little bit I'm not going to do it on that image let's come over here uh, let's do this image with the thing in the back so I'm going to do just a little bit of an edit so I'm going to come in here change the white balance just a little I'm going to bring the highlights down bring the shadows up set the whites set the blacks I do that I used to I used to pull this until I started to see, see those little red spots that tells me I've gone too far and I've lost the whites um, and I used to do that by hand and then I learned that if I just hold the shift key down and double click on the word whites it sets itself does the same thing with blacks I personally like a little more depth to my images so I generally pull that black back just a little bit I'm going to up the clarity just a tad up the contrast just a tad set the vibrance up just a tad and then I'm going to select all three of these images and I'm going to sync them so that everything I just did to that image will be done to all three images and the next step then is to bring that those sets of images into Photoshop as layers now remember I'm using this picture because the primary purpose of this picture is it didn't work and I'm going to explain why it didn't work in just a second um, we'll wait on that to pull into Photoshop thankfully since I have upped the RAM in my iMac this process does not take very long so here are the three images now a couple of things I have to do first of all I need to select them all and then I need to come in here and I need to auto align layers it doesn't matter that it's on a tripod I always reset auto align layers in this case when it's done you'll notice around the edges that it's really blurred and that's because the images are not the same size so it's going to resize each image to fit the other one so that all the pixels line up it's done that very very quickly but now you'll see along here along the top see how that's kind of broken along the side over here it's kind of broken I know that I'm going to have to crop that out when I get back into the Lightroom and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to auto blend layers now Photoshop auto blends two ways I can auto blend it as a panorama or I can auto blend it auto blend it as stack images and when it does stack images what it's going to do if you'll notice over here on the right over here it's going to put masks over each of these images so that only what's in focus shows through and so you'll see this back image back here is in focus this middle image here that I had is in focus this bottom part down here is in focus but I totally missed this lower third right here totally missed it and the reason for that is I only did three um, I only did three exposures now the next image let's come back down here the next image I did six exposures and six is really the lowest limit uh, for it to capture the entire frame um, and so I, it probably would have been better if I had done 10 and moved my focus just a little bit less each time to slowly bring the focus point up the image but I did six so again we're going to come back in here we're going to do a quick edit let's just set a white balance sort of like that 
may not be perfect, but it is for this one. We're going to bring the highlights down a little bit. Going to open the shadows up a little bit. We're going to set our whites if we can. We're going to set our blacks. Now you'll notice the whites overset just a little bit. I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to bring the blacks back down a little bit so I can crush it here along this bark. Bring the clarity up just a tad, the contrast up just a tad. And there are other things that I can do to this image once I'm done. We'll pull that back in when we get finished. But right now I'm just going to select all. I'm going to sync those changes across the aisle here. And that's done. I'm going to edit in Photoshop as layers and we'll let that load. All of the images are now loaded in. I'm going to select them all like I did before. Whoop, let's select them all. I'm going to very quickly come down here and auto align them. And again, that's going to change the size of some images so that all the pixels line up. I'm going to get some rough around the edges again that'll have to be uh, cut out. Um, and then I am going to auto blend. And you can see how simple this process is. The time consuming part of this process is to get the image you want and to take all the exposures you want uh, and to make sure that you've got at least a sliver of each of those images in focus as it goes from front to back. And so now you can see that I have a fairly decently exposed picture here it is in focus now like i said along the bottom down here where my pictures have you know the images have been resized all along the edges i'll have to crop all that out but we're going to come over here we're going to save this image back into lightroom where i can do a little more editing I really like how this image turned out because of the color of the background bokeh. Um, it just really pops for me. So here is the image. You'll notice over here, it is a TIFF image now um, that came from uh, Photoshop. And so again, I'm just gonna like make a couple of adjustments. I'm gonna bring the highlights down just a tad. Now that I've done everything else, I'm going to reset the whites and reset the blacks. I'm going to bring those blacks down just a tad. I'm going to bring the clarity up. I'm going to bring the contrast up. I'm going to bring the vibrance of the image up just a tad, and I'm going to add some texture. And I don't know if I want to dehaze this picture. Now we'll put just a tad of dehaze in there and I've got a couple of spots there where the highlights have blown out. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, and then I generally come in here and I see what these kinds of um, tabs do for me. You'll see the orange really cuts the background down and I would like to sort of darken that a little bit to highlight the image a little bit more. Yellows will brighten the image so I'm going to brighten it just a tad. I've got some green in the image and I can either really darken it or blow it out and I think I'm going to bring it down just a little bit to give a little color. Um, and then I'm going to sharpen this image just a tad here. And uh, before we do that, let's come up here. Let's go ahead and crop out the areas of this image that are not in focus anymore. Let's bring this over just a little bit for that one on the left there. Done. I'm going to add just a little bit of vignetting. And then I typically come down here for landscapes and adjust the blue somewhat because it just makes everything pop. And there you have a finished image. Didn't take long. Uh, the steps are to align them, blend them, bring them back to photo, bring them back to Lightroom, do a final edit. Um, very, very simple. So 
Let's close out the video with a few of the shots that I took and knowing that this is the process that I went through on all of them. And we'll catch you all next week. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notifications button. Help me get to a thousand subscribers. Till next time.